Welcome to Rover Build Part 10, where I will demonstrate how to wire in the Spark motor controllers. We will need our uh, solderless crimp terminals. I'm going to be using a little spade type today, mostly. Um, we're going to need the, uh, the BEC we purchased because the Spark controllers do not uh, supply 5 volts to the receiver unlike the bot bits which do so we're going to wire this in we're going to need a crimping tool for the solderless connections uh, I highly recommend a ratcheting style crimping tool but one of these functions perfectly well some bits of wire and a uh, drill to make some holes in the plywood deck and uh, some screws to fasten these down with. So to begin, I'm just going to drill a pair of holes right through the deck so that we can pass these motor wires through and onto the top of the unit. So a pair of holes. Uh, I drilled them a little on the large size, about half inch, so that the solderless connections can pass through. Uh, so now we'll just put a terminal on each one of these motor wires. Again, the uh, ratchet and crimper is very nice. For stripping the wires, I really like this automatic wire stripper. Um, I also have a uh, Alright, and while we're going crimp crazy, I'll just open up the BEC and toss a couple of crimps on the input wires there as well. Terminals on the end of each motor wire, and I've made up a jumper to go from the battery connector to another pair of terminals. So now we'll just pass all these motor wires through the holes we just made. shove and to the top side. So I think I will position these speed controllers thusly. So one of these sides is going to be running in what the drill originally would consider forward and one of these sides is going to be running in what the drill originally considered reverse. So the normal moving side is a uh, drill usually goes this way and that's going to be going backwards. So this side has to be run in reverse. So we will connect the negative, both of the black wires, we'll stick them right underneath the positive motor terminal on the spark. Positive wires those under that same terminal and tighten that down. Okay, and then on this side, the left side of the robot, these drills are going to be running in the normal way that they think they should be when used as drill. So we'll wire this one uh, normally. So the yellow wires or the positive will go to the positive motor terminal and the black or negative wires will go to the negative motor terminal. But this is how it's all wired. The, uh, the two black motor wires are common together to the positive motor screw on this one. Uh, yeah, this, this one's probably a better example. It's conventionally wired. So the uh, positive wires from the motor are parallel together and then both connected under the positive screw, the negative wires together and under the negative screw. Wire with the battery connector on it. And just put the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative. 
So now this controller and these set of motors will run if we connect it to the battery. So then what we'll do is we'll take these set of jumper wires that I made that just have the uh, little fork terminals on either end and make a jumper. Positive to positive. So this is one of the reasons that I think the, mo the Spark uh, motor controllers are excellent for this application is it's very easy to make uh, multiple connections with the screw terminals if there's something wrong like one of the motors runs backwards to swap its direction you just loosen the screw and swap the terminals uh, very easy much easier than unsoldering things and resoldering them so now we'll take this jumper wire and jumper it over to the other positive terminal on the other spark and the same with the negative the negative terminal of the spark. And then lastly, we'll take our BEC and we'll steal power off of this set of terminals. So again, we'll just uh, put the negative along with this negative and positive along with this positive. That is actually the wiring. It is uh, complete. So now we'll just hook up all the signal wires and the receiver. So of the last of the bits that we need, we have the uh, receiver, have the PWM cables that came with the sparks, and then some double-sided adhesive tape to secure all this down, or my actual preferred is adhesive-backed Velcro. That allows you to uh, quickly reposition and move this stuff around, yet it holds it securely and gives it a little bit of shock protection. So I'll put a pad of this Velcro on the back of the receiver. I think I'm going to put the battery right here in the middle. And to that end, I'm actually going to take the box that the battery came in. battery is currently charging right now. And I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, doctoring on this real quick. Nice, nice heavy cardboard box. This should do nicely. I'm just going to clip there and... Uh, do a little bit of clipping there. And Hold that down in there, and I'm going to use just a little, few spots of tape just to hold this flap down. So now I'll just uh, put a couple of stripes of this in the middle. Very sticky stuff. I get this at the Dollar Tree. It's, uh, it's not as good as the 3M stuff, but it works just fine for these applications. So I'll stick this right in the middle there. That's our battery holder. And we'll put the receiver back here. Just splat the receiver down. Now we we'll need to secure the BEC. We'll use one of these adhesive backed um, mounting tabs. So we'll just splat that right there. And then run a zip tie underneath. And secure that guy down there and plug it into the battery position. Again, noting that the black wire is to the outside of the receiver. Uh, this antenna, let's we'll get a little spot of tape. Here's another uh, invaluable thing. This is gaffer's tape. It is a 
uh, non-reflective cloth-backed adhesive tape that generally does not leave residue. It's from the theater and film industry. Um, it is not cheap at $15 to $20 a roll, but it is invaluable in robots because it does not leave a tacky film behind like the duct tape will. So we'll just use that to pin the antenna down there. So now we'll take the PWM line and we'll start with the left side. So this plugs into the spark thusly. It's a fairly uh, tight fit. Uh, it's probably not going to wiggle free. Um, in combat, I always want to uh, have some sort of way of retaining that. I use a piece of hot glue or a piece of tape over that and pinch it down. Uh, you don't want that. You don't want to rely on just the friction in combat. But for the rover, I'm sure that will be fine. So I'll just uh, bundle up all this excess uh, PWM and throw a zip tie on that as well. Okay, so the left side will go into channel 1. Then this, the right side, will plug into channel 2. Now, um, we may have to change that. Uh, we may have to do some motor swapping here. But for now, let's, uh, let's plug it up and see if it all runs. We'll just start battery. I'm going to put it in the uh, specially constructed battery container. And I'm going to uh, activate the robot with the master switch slash power plug. Okay, so the BEC comes on with the blue light, telling us we're getting 5 volt power. Um, the Both of the spark controllers are flashing. Alright, so now we'll turn on the transmitter. And we get uh, light on the receiver, showing us that we're getting good signal. And both of the spark controller lights have stopped flashing. So, now we'll just push forward on the stick and see if the motors... Okay. Okay, so it looks like forward and reverse is correct, however left and right is switched. So now let's just try switching the 1 and 2. Hmm, that's sketchy. Let's see if that does anything. Okay, so I threw some low traction wheels on there and I put a little stripe of electrical tape on the wheels so that you can see it a little better. So now when I push forward on the stick, both of the wheels go forward. Back on the stick, both of the wheels go back. If I push right, you see this wheel goes forward, this wheel goes backwards. Go the other way. This wheel goes backwards, that wheel goes forwards. It was in fact before reversed, and switching channels 1 and 2 fixed that problem. You could also go back into the uh, program on the radio and reverse it, but I've found that the easiest way is to fix it in hardware, not fix it in software. Uh, once you have the wheels on here, it's very important to always uh, keep it elevated off your work surface on uh, some sort of a block or, you know, the equivalent of jack stands. So I'll go over the wiring one more time. So in the middle, here is the battery. It, we're using this Anderson power pole as a master switch and disconnect. It goes directly into the right side spark motor controller. And from that, we're jumping power on these two leads over to the left spark motor controller. And that power is again being jumpered into the BEC, or battery eliminator. The battery eliminator is taking the mains battery voltage and dropping it down to 5 volts for use by the receiver. And the receiver takes the signal from the transmitter and it puts out a pulse width modulated signal on these two lines. 
there is the left side line plugged into channel 2 into that spark the right side line plugged into channel 1 goes into this spark and then on the output of the sparks there is the positive and negative motor terminal and uh, this is the uh, one, one of these wires goes to the uh, the front motor and the other one goes to the back motor and those are wired in parallel and it's a duplicate on the left side all right with the robot again placed up on blocks and the wheels free of the ground I'll demonstrate how to calibrate the spark motor controller. So I'll take a random piece of this is welded wire, but any sort of pokey tool will work. And you push and hold the calibrate button until the light starts blinking. Then you'll switch the stick to its full range of motion, hitting all four of the corners, returning it to neutral, and then release. The blinking green light indicates a good calibration. Now I'll do it to the other side. And release. Green. Good calibration. So now the two motors should be perfectly matched. So driving in here on these wheels is a little bit like uh, drifting.